Okay, yeah. So so we had a lot of things start happening to us. I remember we were sitting in, in uh, it was actually um, Denny's. Um, so we're sitting in there at the table, and, 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 and it's just amazing how things started working. We were sitting at, uh, at this table. We were on the window. You remember when the guy came and banged on the window? Yeah, the blind yeah, guy? Yeah, there yeah. was a blind black man that came up through the bushes and was knocking on our window. And um, this ain't to blow the horn or blow anything, but this, this is to just share how God already begins to work when you really, you know what I'm saying, things begin to happen like that. Like okay. this would have never happened, you know, if we didn't commit our lives to Christ at that time. But, and we're sitting here looking, we have this big plate of food, you know, and you could tell this guy was homeless, you know. And so just to show you where we, the, 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 just the childlike zeal at that time, we didn't care what people thought. So, so we just said, hey, you know, come on in, you know, like there's always that reproach like, oh, this homeless guy coming in, he's probably been doing this a hundred times. Yep. We didn't even think about that. We saw a person. So he came so in, he, we were eating a meal, and, and he started sharing things about the Lord with us. You know what I'm saying? He started encouraging us. And so that was really cool. But that's the kind of stuff that was happening. That's why we started going the down there. Was moving. Yeah. That's why we started going down. Danny's was like right right off the campus down there because uh, it's Florida Gators down there. It's like, <clears> I think Kimber was 15th Street or it was somewhere right on the corner. It's so right on the, it's right just on the corner of activity. the university. It's just well, activity. Activity like crazy, man. It's a panacea of activity, man. It's a sea of people. So you see all kinds of things. Here, Christmas over here, this over here, that over here. You know what I'm saying? Everything you Imagine can. Imagine State Street that you could drive down. Yeah, State, okay. yes. Okay. That's what it was like. So just a culmination, uh, diversity of people. Different. So let's bring it to the head here. All right. Here, the night in question. The night in question, uh, we had we had went down, and, and as Danny said, we, 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 we had, there was a particular person that worked there that we had been meeting with that mm. he had really um taken Took kind of he was open to us he was he given here he was given he was here always question, you know, he was always, always asking us questions well, and, honest and, and, yeah yeah so we kind of had this dialogue with him and um so we would go down there and we just felt like hey let's go you know let's go talk to this guy and you know so we'd always we'd get our bibles down there you know and it wasn't trying to wear it on our sleeve type thing it was just we didn't you know we were into that and so it was natural you know, there was no pretense or show. We just had our Bibles out, man. And no matter who we talked to or, or where we talked, it was, uh, you know, it was... Anyway, on this particular night, and Danny can expound, then I'll share my perspective, and then he can... Why don't he just read yeah, it? Yeah, why don't you read the notebook and then we'll just, we'll just go from there. When did you write this? This had, this was within, like, a day or two after the event. The event. And I, I only wrote till we left Perkins. Okay. I didn't finish. Dennis. For the record, I just wanted to, to, to point out that I had no idea up until, what was it? Yeah, uh, Tuesday. Or what, Tuesday when we had dinner. Tuesday, this has been, I don't know, how, what, over 10 years. I had no idea that Danny had this. He I, As many times as I've seen him. more than 10 years. You, you, as many times as I've seen him, I had no idea that he had a written record of that of some events that had transpired. So that was really a blessing that, you know. Okay, so Danny, why don't you go ahead and read from the book? In this book, I am making record of a testimony of something that happened to one of my friends and myself. The Lord surely shows His glory. I have loved the Lord my whole life, but I had still had little had that little doubt in my mind. I never picked up a Bible and read it for myself, and truly understand what I was reading. It, it is truly the most perfect thing in the world. Well, Dave and I were were very new in the Lord. We were like babies always falling and, and getting back up. We were just baptized in the, in the name of Jesus a week before this happened. If we had not been baptized, who knows what the, this creature could have done to us. I give thanks to the Lord for that day. We had decided to go to Denny's, a local hangout in Gainesville, Florida. <clears throat> we go there every night and have coffee. Well, this night was different than other nights. In fact, different than any night I have ever had. I had a bad feeling before I even went in the restaurant. It was like... God was already warning me that was going to happen. Going to happen. Well, we went up to the counter where they prepare the food and sat down, like you know, like one of yeah, those bar stools. Yeah. Yep. 
I noticed a black man about 19 or 20 working behind the counter. He kept looking at us. I thought nothing of it. The next time I saw him, he was sitting four stools down from, from us. Everyone looked at him strange. I looked <clears throat> down again and looked toward him again, and he was staring at me, staring me in the eyes. He nodded at, at me, and I did the same back. He, was, he came over and sat down next to me, looked into my eyes, and said, You're ready. I said, Ready for what? He didn't answer me. I just thought he's crazy. He looked around. Uh, he looked around the packed room and said, "They're all fooled." And and he started talking about the, about God to me. It's as if he read my mind and he mocked me, and I didn't even know it because many men die of the lack of knowledge. And that's. That's a scripture that he quoted to us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think it's Hosea, my people perish for a lack of Yeah, knowledge. he quoted that to us. He quoted it. Yeah, you, I remember you... That's why he has that written down. Okay, so let's, let's keep going from right there. You okay, wanna, yeah. I would like to. That was... I'm just so touched right now because that is, is like the most... I'll let it speak for itself. Well, you're, you're excited to hear Danny speak those words, you know? It was just... Yeah, I had no idea that he had that. And that just brings back... Um, See, I remember talking to Danny about that, too, and he had actually seen him before I did. Okay. Um, I had seen him when he had actually come around. And sat next to So him. I thought he came from outside, but Danny told me later on that he had seen him behind the counter. The counter. It was just weird because, you know, he was behind the counter, and then he's sitting at the counter. I was like... He looked like a homeless guy because he had... Um, he was wearing Fila shoes. He had Fila mm -hmm. shoes on, and he had two pairs of shorts on. There was You could see the other pair of shorts... Yep protruding from the other ones and um i can't exactly remember what his top was but anyway um as danny said danny told you what his dialogue was with him and i guess i can come in now how, yeah, how, how, how i remember it i when i first spotted him he was over by the window um look and he was looking at people coming in through the door then he's yeah, and he was pr walking back and forth he was he was looking like this and he just had this look of like like dan says kind of a mock kind of a laughing look and um so eventually he was sitting on the stool and then I saw him, I, he was talking to you first, I think, right? Mm -hmm. He offered, I'll never forget it. You had quit smoking. I don't know if you remember this. Mm -hmm. What did he offer you? A Newport. A Newport, his brand of cigarette. It was just strange. Did he <laughs> offer you a cigarette? No. Were you a smoker? No. So he might have. He was just making fun of, I think that he was just making fun of all the little, just all the little things that how he gets Christians beat up. And I, I don't know, it was just strange that he offered him. I couldn't believe it. And that was his brand of cigarette, and he offered him, and Danny goes, what kind is it? And he said, it's a new part. <laughs> like he knew, but that ain't even nothing. It gets intense. Okay. So as Danny said, so yeah, when he started talking, now, just to lay a little bit of foundation, we were just babes in the Lord, so we still hadn't been exposed to a lot of Scripture. Yeah. And now hearing what he said, it had only been a week since we had been baptized. Mm -hmm. But, um, so we really didn't have uh, any way of testing the spirits or anything like that. I want to get too heavy. I want to keep it pure of how it was that night. Mm-hmm. So I started talking to him, and he started talking to me, and like I was like, "Wow, you know," because he just like he seemed like he knew God, like philosophical, philosophical, and like, and all this stuff. And so I remember I started asking him detailed questions right after he offered. I said, "Um, first thing I asked him, first thing I asked him is I said, um, I said, how old are you?" And he said he looked at me and he said, "I have no age." And I thought at that particular time that, oh, this guy's crazy, you know, okay, well, maybe he's just some street guy, he's kind of out there, you know. So I'm, right away, I'm thinking, we're going to take this guy home, we're going to feed him, you know, that's my mindset. We're just a whole, yeah, we're going to minister this guy. And um, he said he had no age, and then I, 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 so I looked at him, I said, well, what's your name, or whatever, you know, and he said, uh, he said, my name is Jeremiah. And um, I was like, oh, okay, you know, and I'm like, okay. And um, so we, okay, so... I, this is this is the first time that I realized, um, I didn't even realize it then, but looking back, 
I started telling them about Jesus. And the second that I brought up the name of Jesus and started sharing my testimony mm -hmm. about what we were doing down there, he got up and walked away. Hmm. He would walk away. And, yeah, I'm going to get you to go right to Ephesians. Yeah, you remember that. But anyway, yeah, you showed me, actually, in my testimony. I I'm going to get to that. Okay. He remembers. Isn't no, that something? I mean, he, Danny remembers that. Wow. I wish they could see. Okay, so... So, so, um, I thought, okay, this guy's a little, but then, but I'm like, he can't be nuts because he's talking about the Lord. Like, he really knew, like, and then he's quoting scriptures to Daniel. He quoted that scripture to me in the car, and then he laughed about it, but I'll, I'll get to that. About perishing with a lack Yeah, of my people perish and are destroyed. Well, obviously, the devil mocks and laughs at mankind for, for their spiritual blindness about the knowledge of God. He thinks yeah. that it's just, he's very crude. He revels in it. He revels in it. It's, it's, if you really could see, we, uh, we'll get to that. So, okay. So we're look so my perspective at this point is this is a homeless guy who seems a little bit out there but in the same sense he was completely pulling me in because he really seemed to know the deep things about God mm -hmm. and he seemed to know us which was really like when I'll get to that in a minute like he really just was already it seemed like he was one step ahead of us mm -hmm. on everything yeah he just had this and I remember when I was looking at his in his eyes they were dark dark almost black and um when I was looking into his eyes, it just seemed like they were so empty and dead. They just dead. That's all I can say. Death. It was yeah, death. They looked pretty dead. It was death. And I'm thinking, this guy has no shit. You know, when someone's spirit filled, there's this twinkle. There's a there, there's that aura, that countenance, that joy. There's that dew. Heaven's dew on him. And he didn't. This dude. But but yet he was speaking the scriptures. Mm. And I think that's important. And that drew you in. And that drew us in. And we had no way to counteract or test the spirits or do anything because we were still just babes. We weren't even equipped in the we were, But we had all this zeal and we had felt the Holy Spirit and we were touched and all those different things. Anyway, right away, Dan and I, back to, back to what we were doing. Hey, let's, I started talking to him like, hey, man, let's invite him to the, back to the apartment. We'll take mm -hmm. him to church tomorrow. You know, let's get him some clothes. So this was a Saturday night then. Yeah, we're going to try. Yeah, and, yeah, we're, yeah. I think it was Saturday. It was a Saturday We're going to try and help him out, you know. You need a place to stay, stay, whatever, you know. Yeah. So, so he yeah. accepted your offer. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get to that. Yeah, but he was in, unsure. It's like he was feeling us out, too. It was strange. Like, he was kind of really trying to feel how much, where we were at. You know, and I'm thinking, there's the part of me's creeped out by this guy. Part of me's intrigued. Part of me wants to help this guy. So it was kind of like, okay, I'm going to ride with this and keep going, you know. So we make him this offer. Hey, you want to come back? We'll feed you. And he was kind of reluctant. And then, and like I said before, every time I started talking about Jesus or telling my testimony or praising God, he'd walk away. And I remember thinking in my mind at the time, what is wrong with this guy? He's rude. But now I look back on it, it overcame by the word of their testimony, by the blood of the One thing, I just want to put this out there. Your testimony um, about your conversion and about what Christ has done in your life is absolutely important. Amen. And it will make Amen. darkness flee. Amen. The devil hates your testimony. Amen. Don't ever, oh, I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Don't ever let the devil shut your mouth about your testimony because he will do everything in the world. I'm in the spirit right now. He will do everything in the world, everything he can do to get you to shut your mouth. Don't shut your mouth about what God has done in your life. Tell the good works and tell the goodness of God as much as you can, wherever you can. Don't ever allow the devil to shame you into silence. Man, that's right from the Lord. I want people to know that is something that is so powerful. If you ever feel bound or you ever feel in darkness or you ever feel defeated, start praising God. Start thanking God for your testimony and darkness will flee, I promise you. Amen. The devil cannot be around that. He cannot be around the name of Jesus he cannot be around the testimony. He cannot be around any of it. He doesn't want to be around it. That's something. So as believers, you have a testimony. That's I don't word, care bro. what it is. That's a good word. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I mean, I just felt the you boldness. Know, glory to God. Uh, yeah, glory to God. I just really looking back on that, right? You remember when he would, and I mm -hmm. thought, like I said, at the time being... He'd go to the bathroom. Go to the, yeah, the we, house. when we got oh. back. So, so, so we can move to the house. If they okay, could. so we get him and we get him in the car. It was my car, yeah. Um, so we got him back. And, and he, Danny was driving. I'm in the back seat. And I started asking him for whatever reason. It's funny how it says the the devil can masquerade. Satan transforms himself as an angel of light. He can seem, come, and appear, and even his ministers can appear as God's servants. And this is just how it seemed to, to me. Like, the, but there was something. And I remember in the car, in particular, um, when he, we were going back to our apartment, because he he took our offer, and he, I remember him telling me. That God, and this is a trick of the devil, I look back on it now, but he, I remember him telling me, he sowed a really wicked seed in me, that um, he started telling me that if God's all-powerful, 
and that all of this is his fault, basically, is the way he said it. God could stop all this. Um, you know, he was maligning God's character and basically um, trying to putting this subtle seed into me that if God really loved people, mm. none of this would be happening. This pain and suffering, he is the source, he's the creator, he made it all. You know what I'm saying? It started somewhere. It's not my fault. You know, You know. basically, I look back on it now, but it was so... I didn't realize what he was even doing, but he was polluting me. To, it was a seed being planted. Because yeah. I struggled with that for years later. With I would I would battle against that, you know, about questioning God. Where are you, where are you God? Yeah, where are you? You know, and I know a lot of people struggle with that, but there was this thing, like, because when you get the deep things of God, like, well, where did sin... You know, and every, we, all, we all go through those. Yes. We're limited, you know what I'm saying? But we all we go... see through a glass. We see through a glass darkly, and we can't possibly know the fullness. The devil is basically saying we didn't have a, a, a free will. Yeah, robots. We're, that we were robots, mm -hmm. and God ruled everything, controlled everything. He's and a tyrant. He's a tyrant. He's a guy. tyrant. He's sovereign to the point that mankind, you know, that he's basically the source of evil. That's what the devil... The devil's trying to eliminate himself from... Well, that's the Luciferian... That's the New Age Luciferian doctrine that's, that's coming forth right now is that Lucifer is the light bearer. He came and rescued Adam and Eve okay. from the evil God. And well, that's what Luciferians okay. put forth. Okay, okay. That's about what he that's was... That's the seed. That's the seed. So... Um, and it was very, at the time, I, I was just more awed because he seemed like this person who knew this deal. Wow. You and you're know? getting tossed back and forth. And, What's up with this guy? Well, I, I'm just liking this guy at that particular point. I'm thinking, man, he knows his stuff, right? Didn't, didn't you? I mean, mm -hmm. even for some time. But anyway, we get him back to our apartment. This here, here's, here, here's where it really gets, it really gets heavy. We get him in, and Danny and I just want to love on this guy. He's, you know, we're just like, hey, man, you want to eat? And I remember he, 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 um, he want to eat food. Anything that we offered him, he would not eat any food. He, we, Danny and I, right, right back to custom, we're in our Bible sitting at the kitchen table. And we're, him and I are like, just reading the Bible and talking about the Lord and kind of talking to this guy, offering him stuff. And he's on our couch in the living room, but we could see him. We're in, it was kind of an open kitchen, open living room. Mm -hmm. So we were, we were sitting and we could, he was on our couch. We said, hey man, you know, have the couch or whatever. And, so we're talking back and forth, and I'm offering him. He wouldn't take nothing. And then I realized, you know, I'm thinking to myself, oh, he's kind of dirty, you know, I'll maybe better take a shower. I got some clothes. And so, uh, but before that, once again, when I started sharing my testimony to him, because I'm get thinking, up and he, go to the bathroom. yeah, he started getting up and go to the bathroom. And we're like, how many times Man, has this guy right? got you know, to go? What's he got going on? He's in there every Every minute. time we started telling yeah. about Jesus, he'd go up and go to the bathroom. And Danny and I are getting tripped out. We're like, what the heck? Is he robbing us? Or what? <laughs> we didn't know what. Yeah, I mean, maybe that's what Danny was thinking. I didn't oh, know. God, I, was, I was, come he, on, man. You I was sympathetic. Like, oh, he must have a bladder problem. You know, yeah. <laughs> Danny's, Danny's was, a little more hip than I am at that. So you were a little more suspicious of him when he was behaving this character. Well, when he's getting up every minute or every minute or every other minute and going to the bathroom, you hear the faucet run the whole time he's in there. And, you know, it was just weird. Yeah. And so, but that's every like, time we started talking, wasn't it? We didn't have anything for him to steal, but it's yeah. just funny. It was a joke, you know. Yeah, no, you just, yeah. odd behavior. Yeah. Odd behavior, but it was every time that. The Lord would come up. That every time I started telling him about my testimony, <laughs> about Jesus, you know, this is what he did. We came down here, praise God, you know. So when he came out, like, it was maybe the third time where I said, hey, you want to take a shower? And he's like, he looks at me. He looks at me with this long stare. He's just looking at me with this long stare, and it was like we got we we locked with our eyes. And I'm thinking, okay, and he's like, sure or yeah or whatever he said. And so I go run back. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna bless this guy. I'm gonna get some of my clothes or whatever. You know, I'm gonna give him some clothes because I could see like what he was wearing. I'll never forget it. That's why I remember it in detail. Those double Le shorts. Double shorts and in the feel of shoes. I, I'll never forget it. When he decides and he's taking his merry time, and I go and I went in the back bedroom and I got mm. some clothes and, and I met him. I said, here you go, man. Here's some clothes. And he looks at me. And he looks at me. and He goes, I can't wear them. And I'm like, what? And I'm thinking to myself in my head, what do you mean you can't wear them? And I'm looking at what he's wearing in this. And I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. Easy the choice. guy don't want food. The guy don't want... I mean, what is, what's going on? And he said, I can't... I, I, I can only wear particular colors. I can't wear these colors. And so he was talking about colors. Um, that's what he said to me. I can only wear particular colors. That's interesting. That is interesting. Um, so I'm looking at what his colors were, you know. And I'm thinking... And he had particular green, red, or whatever it was. But I don't know how that was relevant. But he said... Maybe somebody out there could expound on why he he would only wear. Anyway, so he goes into the bathroom, and Danny and I are looking at each other like, "This guy's mm -hmm. off. This guy's a little out there." 
But then again, we did, we're like, okay. You just saw past it each time. Each time. Yeah. Okay. We overlooked it. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. He's streak, you know, he's, you know, whatever. We, we, we felt, you know, it was so weird to us because we wanted to tell this guy about Jesus, but he's telling us everything. But in the mm -hmm. same sense. But at what point did, uh, did, did he bring that, that passage that Danny just opened up to? I'm going to get to that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's coming up. Right before. Mm -hmm. right okay. Before, well, yeah. So anyway, so we're sitting at the table. We heard him turn on the pipes, right? Like he turned on, you could hear our shower in the pipes. Shh. Yeah. And he kept turning it on and then he would turn it off. Mm -hmm. And we could hear it. it. I don't weird. think he knew he could he that we could hear it. And we're thinking, I mean, he did this like on and off. And I want to say one thing before all this. When he was sitting on our couch, like when I started telling his testimonies, he'd run to the bathroom, he couldn't stop itching his legs. He kept oh, yeah, itching. Yeah, itching. Itching. Constantly, dude. Constantly itching. Constantly. Um, I don't know if, you know, I don't his, know. I mean, it was to the point where it was like crazy, like this is way out of, it's not like somebody just has an itch or maybe they got a scratch. Okay. He's just like raking on his legs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Agitation. <laughs> and, um, I had heard something later on about that, but. Yeah. We can, we can move, okay. we can patch that up after. But that was going on too. And then before all this too, I want to add this in. He would come up to us, like when we'd be talking, like to him back and forth, and he would say things that Danny and I used to say. Yeah, he did. Well, give me, do you remember any examples? I always used to tell people when they would give me something, I'd always say, I appreciate that. I'd say that just like that, right? Mm -hmm. He'd say that to me. I, when I offered him the food, he'd look at me and he'd say it in a mocking tone. He goes, I appreciate that. And I remember thinking to myself, like, what? And he said other things, too, that we had things that... Okay. It was such an odd coincidence, and I thought maybe it was just coincidence, but he would... It was mocking. It was he was doing it in a mocking way. Like he knew us. Like, you know, I mean, that was just like wow. Because he'd say that and he'd kind of look at me and almost with a weird grin. <laughs> okay, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, so he he went to Eric and we heard the pipes going on and off and all that. And then he comes out and I'm like, well, I'm like, did you take did you take did you take a shower? I had the boldness to ask him that. I didn't want to embarrass him, but and he just kind of nodded his head. And then after he went, I went in the bathroom, and I could see that he never went in. He never went mm -hmm. in the shower or the bath. What he did, because he left a a footprint, you know, on the edge of the, the bath. We had, like, a porcelain bath. There was a dirty footprint. He could step. He stepped on the edge of it, and you could see where his footprint was. Mm -hmm. he, he never stepped into the water. And you know Brother Kelly Herring? Yes. Told me later when he was in the Satanism, they can't, the, the, something with the water, but he could not, he didn't get in the water. He didn't take. He wouldn't take it, which was really we strange. We joked about that. We're like, you believe that? Yeah. Well, after later that night, we just couldn't believe trying to put it all together. Put it all together, you know, because we were like, he won't, because he won't eat food. He won't wear certain clothes, and he won't take a shower. What homeless guy isn't going to take a hot shower? Um, get some food. Get some food and get some food. rags. Who cares on. what the colors are? Yeah, who cares? I mean, really. Yeah. So, so we're still not getting it though. We're looking past everything. Like, oh, maybe he just did. You know, maybe we're being too. But you know, we're just too ignorant of what was really going on. What was in our midst? Well, yeah, you like you said, you were babes. We're you just babes, know. man. You and and he was taking friend. advantage. Of, but anyway, so when all this is said and done, he gets on our couch, okay, and things stepped up a notch. Um, he he was. Uh, yeah, you can get that. He was on the um, he was on our couch, and we were, and so we had our Bibles on. I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna, cause he was he was still, you know, talking things, and I said, uh, hey, I looked at him and I said, hey, you want to have a Bible study? <laughs> just like that. And he didn't really, he never give us a yes or no answer. It was always a nod or a, you know, like, and I, I basically make the move. Yeah. So Danny's staying at the table. He's just sitting at the table. He was you were on the back side towards the fridge. Mm -hmm. And so I get down and he's he's laying on our couch, his head at the pillow side, his feet at the other end of the couch. He's just uh I'll, I'll get to that. He's just leaned out. And I got on my knees and I'm kind of looking up at him. I'm maybe two feet, I'm I'm on the carpet and he's up on the couch. I'm looking up at him. I got my Bible. He doesn't have a Bible. And yep. I said, I said, because uh, at this particular time, I'm thinking he wants it. Because I knew he had talked all this stuff about the Bible. You felt he knew the scriptures. Yeah. He was sharing. Yeah. He knew the scripture. yeah. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, you, shared with, you shared this with me in my bedroom after Perkins. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get to that. Okay. So I looked at him and said, because I didn't know where to start. I'm like, okay, you know, it says I have a Bible study. Let's go through the Bible, you know. 
And um, I looked at him and I said, uh, hey, uh, where should we start? Where do you want to go? And he looked at me and he said, let the Spirit of God lead you. That's what he said to me. When I'm like, okay, and you got to remember I'm a babe in the Lord. And I'm kind of like, um, okay, that's like heavy. That's like heavy, you know what, what I mean? What does that mean? Yeah, like, okay. And um, and then he looked at me and he said, um, well, before he did that, before he gave me a scripture, he looked at me. And this got really, this put almost fear in me. He looked at me and he said, he looked me right in the eyes and he goes, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you fear no evil. That's what he said to me. And I was like, whoa. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was heavy. And then when he did that, right after he did it, he went, woo, like this. He just went like this, woo, with his arms. Like he, like, like kind of a, I don't know how you'd explain, like a wood. Describing it for the listeners, he kind of just waved his arms. He waved like, his arms and Like came, he's kind of boogie-woogie. Boogie-woogie at me. He's like, after he said that, though you walk through the valley of shadow, that you fear no evil. And then he went, woo, woo, like that to like, you know, and I'm like, whoa. And I didn't even know. I'm like, and I'm still not getting it. You know what I'm saying? I'm still like, I'm just excusing everything. It's just like, hello, you know, here's your sign. I mean, it was just like, wow. Um, anyway, then he looks at me in a real stern look and he says, go to Ephesians 2. And here it is. And Danny, you must, you heard him saying that? Is that how you remembered it? I have remembered that ever since you said it. Okay. For, for the listeners, the reason we're saying this is because while Dave's been talking, Danny grabbed my Bible off the counter and turned right to Ephesians 2 and, and handed it to Dave. That was earlier when Dave said, oh, oh there it is. <clears throat> and ever since, Dad, this has been one of my favorite scriptures because it reminds me of it, and it pretty much puts it all in one spot. Yeah, the whole gospel. This, I mean, read, you should read yeah, it because... the whole gospel um, is in Ephesians. Just everything, in the, in the, and it's got the, the adversary and what his work is, and... So, so he, can, I, can I pause you for a second? Here? Yeah. When you read this scripture, I want you to differentiate because I remember you telling me this. I want you to differentiate between what he read to you. Oh yeah. And the totality of that section of scripture. Well, okay. So I was going to read it, but I don't know what I don't know what compelled me to do it. But I'm like, here, you read it. And so I turned it. I turned my scripture and gave it to him, and he started looking at it. And um, I said, read it. You know, I'm like, read. I'm like, read it. And this is how he read it. And you he were trespasses wherein to the course he was skipping over words like he couldn't read it verbatim like word for word and i remember and i'm like hmm you know and i'm thinking oh maybe he just can't read that good Dile dyslexic he's dile yeah or whatever i didn't even think that i just thought oh, okay. he, he he just was illiterate <laughs> you know to so i mean you know i'm thinking oh, i felt bad oh man i didn't mean to put him on the spot so i i I grabbed it back, probably to try to rescue the situation from it being awkward. And um, the scripture, and this is the scripture, Dan Dan says this is like the nutshell, and it's... Um, That's what I think. It's give us the an address again, where are we? We're in uh, Ephesians 2. And it says, uh, And you has he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, that's the devil, among whom also we all had our conversations in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, this is great, his, his treasure chest, who is rich, rich in mercy, for his great love, worth what he loved us, even when we were in sins, dead in sins, has quickened us or made us alive together with Jesus Christ. By grace you are saved. And has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves... It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should brag. Okay, so that 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 that's the scripture. Okay. Um, but it was basically the main the main part of it was uh, 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 one through nine of Ephesians two. Um, but as I said, as he tried, he couldn't read it. He he skipped over it, and it was intentional. And um, yeah, that's what, okay. So so. After he, so after he gave me back the Bible, this is in, 
Oh, Lord Jesus, help me. This is where it gets, uh, this is where everything changes. Um, Dan was up sitting at the table. It's kind and, of weird. Yeah. Um, I'm sitting, I'm sitting, you know, down, I'm still on my knees. And there was this awkward silence that came over us after this happened. It must have been me, I don't know how long, how many seconds or, but I was looking at him, like I'm looking at you. Yeah. Um, but I was, I locked in with him right in his eyes and I'm looking at him and I'm looking at him and all of a sudden, this is where, this is where, uh, and I want to, can I quote a scripture here real quick? Yeah. Do you need the scripture? Christ, you... Jesus said, and I believe all this happened to us, um, as a confirmation of, of, of Christ's word. Jesus said in the, uh, last days, false Christ, false prophets, uh, shall rise um, and shall show miracles, signs, and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect of God. And so, I've heard that scripture quoted by many preachers out there, and I believe a lot of times, and I'm not faulting anybody, but it's out of context. Um, or it's applied to something that's not relevant to what Jesus is talking about. It's a very literal scripture. And it has to do with the fact that there will be signs and wonders that are supernatural. We're not talking about just these charlatan mm -hmm. preachers yeah. that are putting hands on people. Health and, and wealth. Health and wealth. We're talking about a different type of creature. Mm -hmm. We're talking about demons. Like, we're, yeah. or things that you can see and you know feel. Right. Anyway, I'm looking at him, and all of a sudden... And when and, and the, the best Did he way, say anything to you? Then? No, okay. no. I was looking at him, and all of a sudden, I'm looking at. We locked. <coughs> we really locked. It was like a lock in. You know what I'm saying? And because there was this awkward silence after, like, what do you do next? Well, um, all I can say is my whole life. I want to say one more thing, just to lay the foundation. I feel it's important. I share this. My whole life, you know, I watch movies and I watch stuff in Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen stuff, and it's funny how. I believe that the adversary is behind a lot of those things to mm. make things. As you all, you always hear the old adage about C.S. Lewis that the greatest deception the devil ever did is to make himself not real. But in an essence, that there's a lot of truth to that because he also wants to make things seem fan fantasy or um, not real. Okay, to kind of make the spiritual realm seem not real, to make people ashamed or think that you're crazy. He wants to do anything he can to discourage people from understanding that there is a lot more than what the eye sees. Amen. So he uses counterfeit things and the things in Hollywood to tell us that, that we view and perceive things as fiction. And so you'll see like these things transfigure and you see all stuff in the movies, right? As nonfiction. What you, as fiction. As as fiction, I'm sorry, as fiction. So anyway, this is what happened. Here it is, cut and dry. As I'm staring at him, right at the big, at the tip of his nose, his flesh, his human flesh, began to, um, it, it started like a pinpoint on his nose. He, his flesh started to transfigure right in front of me. And initially when it happened, I, w I was like taken, I didn't even, it was like, you know, they say you've seen a ghost or, I'm like looking, I had to, I'm, I'm looking you at him. You have to keep looking. I'm Hand looking. Jump in. Yeah. I was sitting at the table reading, and all of a sudden, Dave starts crying. Well, I'm going to get to that point. He that that cause that comes after. Okay. So before you, what's happening? That, Danny you? doesn't even see what's going on yet. He's no, he's I facing didn't. the other way. Like and then he's, oh. Dave looked at me. He's like, dude. Oh, okay, just all I'll right, get to yeah. it. hang on. Hang on. <laughs> so praise God, man. This needs to come out. Yeah. So his flesh started transfiguring. I'm two feet from this guy, and his flesh starts transfiguring at his nose. This is in um. This would have been in October of um, 1997, mm -hmm. Gainesville, yeah. Florida. It was one year later. You're Gaines, sharing... Gainesville, yeah. Florida. Um, yeah. Hello, Gainesville. <laughs> oh, I, this just flashed into me. This just quickened to me, too. Um, when I had asked him where he was from, this is earlier on, he said Florida. And I believe now looking back on it, there's a principality. There's principalities and territorial. He was very, he wouldn't say what city. I kept asking him or where. He wouldn't say. He just said Florida. So, um, so yeah, his fl all of a sudden, and when that happened, when it, all of a sudden, it's about, about his whole nose, if you can imagine, imagine the member of your nose, and th it's spreading, it started spreading, and it, it started at the tip of his nose, his whole nose, and it started to light up like light, just like in his flesh just transfigured. Just like I can imagine what Jesus did on the mount, but not that kind of glory. This was less than that, but it was the same thing. He was transfiguring. And 
as soon as that, it was within seconds of that, in my belly, in my stomach, right away, I called on Jesus. First thing I did is I called on Jesus. And I said, Jesus, I cried, I started crying. I said, Jesus, you know, because I'd never seen nothing. I didn't even know what to do. And in my gut, right after I called on Jesus, in my stomach, it was like, the only thing, it was like a geyser. If you could picture like a, a natural spring geyser, yes. that's what I felt inside my stomach come right up through me. It was a supernatural power. I mean, like, I've heard people felt the Holy Spirit, and I felt it, and this was, this was like the Lord rised up, the Holy Ghost rised up. I felt it. I mean, it was, when they say, like, the wind came in on Pentecost, yes. this came up through my gut. It, like, it, like, it just, all I can picture is, like, a, a seed cracked open in my gut, and the guts came out, and it, the water the, came right up through me, and I felt like I could float. That's what it felt like. I felt like I could float. And you're crying and you're and crying I'm cry out to Jesus. And, 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 and so, and when I cried out to Jesus, I heard him. And I don't know how he could talk because his no. Because by this time I'm just like and and he said, "Don't say that." That's what he said to me. Don't say that. That's what he said to me. And he said to me, "I'm the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings." That's what he said to me. Yes, sir. Okay, so you're crying out. So anyway, I'm looking at him. By that time, his whole body. He had transfigured even his clothes, everything. He looked like, the only thing I can describe it as, you could see his form. It was like light. It was like lava. If you could picture like lava, like a head and a body. It looked like lava. It looked like lava. There, And you could just barely see like a form. And it was light. And then all of a sudden he'd come back in and it'd be his shirt and his flesh and his body and everything. And he'd be solid so again. like an outline. Yeah, so, so hang on. So I get up, right? <laughs> I get up. After I see this, and he comes back in the flesh, and I'm thinking in my mind at this time, even though he said that stuff, I I was so I never seen nothing like this in my whole life. I thought he was an angel, you know, from the Lord. I knew he wasn't Jesus. I knew that wasn't Christ, it, the the Holy Spirit in me, or what? I knew, and when I called on Jesus, that I felt that 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 geyser in me explode. I got up after he came back into like the flesh in his clothes, um, after he transfigured and came back in, and I walked back towards Danny and I couldn't even talk you know all they say in the old saying you look like you've seen a ghost you couldn't yeah. talk I couldn't I could barely I, I never experienced anything like that as I was saying about Hollywood and all that all of a sudden things that I thought I believed in the Lord at the time and everything and about spirits and all that, but all of a sudden I seen something I had never seen in my life ever you know what I'm saying it was like I didn't even know what to do and I started walking over towards Dan and I turned towards him and I'm crying and I'm just weeping and well, He's let's, a, let's go to Danny here. Well, hang on. i gotta, I got to okay. tell you, this is part of it. All of a sudden, I'm looking at Danny in his eyes, and I'm like, Danny, Danny. I couldn't even talk. I'm like, Danny, angel, angel. I'm like, there's an angel. And all of a sudden, his eyes, if I'm looking at you, his eyes, like when someone opens their eyes really wide, yeah. like all of a sudden, I saw his eyes open up really wide like this. Like they just opened up really wide. And he's like, and he, I could see like this almost like amazement. And all of a sudden, all around Danny... All around Danny and all the way up to the ceiling is this sh white, bright Shekinah aura light. Mm -hmm. Okay? I saw the same thing. And then I here. asked him later on, I said, Danny, you know, I saw, I saw he goes, that's why my eyes were so thing. big because he said, that's what was around you. And it went all the way. It was the, glo the glory of God. God protected us. He protected us. He did. He protected and I saw us. this around, I got goosebumps, dude. I saw us around him and he saw it around me too. I didn't realize it was around me, but that's why his eyeballs it got big. I mean, and then he walked over, but anyway, he walked over, and I said, "Go over there, look, and you can tell him what you I, saw." I, after I looked, that. I looked at his face, and all of a sudden, it, it is like his he was lava. I, I swear, I, I swear to God, I, this is what I saw, and I shouldn't swear like to God like that, but you know what I'm saying. That is what I saw. I saw. I was just, and at this point in time, you don't know that. We're you don't know if it's of God or not. Not of God. God. Yeah, we, we didn't know because it, it was supernatural. It was know? just supernatural. It was supernatural, yeah, it was like supernatural. nothing. I mean, man, I've never seen nothing ex like okay, this. So, okay, so so him, him and I and, he, and and he did it a couple more times after that. Like I watched him go back. He go back in to 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 he light up and then come back in and um. First thing I had to do, I have all of a sudden felt led to go get my cousin. And now they were a lot more seasoned than the Lord. What the, time was this? This was at like, what, 1 o'clock at yeah, night? Yeah, probably 1 in the morning. Yeah, they were sleeping. You know, they have no yeah. idea. You know, they had kind of warned us not to be going downtown. Dude, wake up. Yeah, so, so I run over there. 
I said, Danny, wait. I leave Danny. Were, were you with me? No, I went out there with you. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. I, I got this actually. Uh, Angel told me this at, Dad's, at, at Audra's wedding. She told me her side of the testimony. Oh, you did hear it. Okay. So at Audra's wedding, I asked it was her. my Okay, it was my cousin Angel and Raphael and Audra and their dog, Happy. Okay? And there's a, this is a funny story about why his name the is Happy. The dog is going off. Yeah, yeah, okay, we'll get to that. Um... Dude, I come, Danny and I are knocking on this door, like, erratically. Because we just, you know what I mean? And finally, it took about five minutes, and they wake up, and they're, like, in their, like, garb. Pajamas. Yeah, their pajamas, and they're, like, yawning. And they open up the door, and I'm, like, the first thing I said was I had my hands out. And I'm, they said to us later on that we were as pale as a ghost. Yeah. They said we couldn't even talk, which I could not talk. I literally, it was, like, you remember, it was that, I think it was the, what, what priest that he could not, his his tongue was tied. Mine was about tied almost. But was not the father of John the Baptist? Yes, yeah. yes. But it was like if I could imagine, but not quite as intense. But I could still talk. But I could not. You were tied. I, the amazement of what I experienced was just. It was like nothing you like ever a, experienced. Ever experienced. And all I could say was, because I had felt that from when that like the guys when the Holy Spirit had filled me, I, I kept going to them. Receive the Spirit. <laughs> Receive the Spirit. That's all I could say to him. Receive the Spirit. You know, that's, that's all I could say to him. Oh, within five minutes, you're seeing auras and yeah. transfigurate. I mean, it's, you know, it's like... It's... So, so, so anyway, they're like, what's going on, you guys? They didn't even know. They're like, I'm like, and then finally I kept saying to him, Angel angel and she's like what what because my cousin's Her name was angel and she's like i'm like no no angel angel and they're like what so they finally get dressed and i'm like come over angel you know because i could not get it out i didn't even know you know what i'm saying and i'm just in amazement like come see this angel and so they get all their stuff on and these are they've been in the lord quite a long time and they knew how to test and she was into all kinds of like spiritual warfare books and all that. I remember her telling me about it, but I wasn't even on that level yet. You know what I'm saying? I was just a babe and it was all too heavy. And anyway, she comes over and they had a little dog. It was a wiener dog. And it, his name was Happy. And the reason, and his name is so funny. I think they actually adopted it and they named it Happy. And one of the reasons they named it Happy is because this dog loved everybody it ever met. This dog licked people. I mean, this is one of those dogs, like, you'd be sitting there, oh, man, what's this thing going to stop licking me? <laughs> okay. You know what you I mean? You lay on the floor. You lay on the floor yeah. and, it's, and it's on your leg and it's doing all kinds of things, you know. But the thing is just a love dog, you know what I okay. mean? Yeah, I mean, it was, you know, really, it did do that to you. I'm, I'm yeah, you get okay. I don't mean to be I don't mean to be rated X here, but this dog was happy. Okay? That dog, when it came into the apartment, that dog and that's what made Angel all of a sudden trigger. trigger. Mm -hmm. She knew something. That dog was doing circles growling and just <laughs> barking like crazy. <laughs> just going crazy on this. And she's like she never seen him act that way ever and all the times didn't ma never No, this dog mm -hmm. The hair on his back was standing up. The second, and, and and this dog was just going ballistic. I mean, not just growling like a dog. We're talking. This dog was mm -hmm. literally chasing out of its, its form. out of its mind yeah. the whole time. It would. Ne she couldn't even get him to be quiet. So what? So what happened? So she point? started. So she's like, who? Okay. So then we're like, that's an, and I'm telling her in her ear, that's an angel. That's and she's not. All she's seeing is this flesh. So she starts asking what his name is, right? All of a sudden, he says a different name than he told me. She asks how old he is. He's like 21. He starts telling her he's totally acting different than mm -hmm. what he was to us. And we're like, what the heck? What's you know? going on? So then she started testing the spirit. She goes, I'm going to test your spirit right now. That's what she says to him. Because she's on this. Because after her dog, and then she's kind of getting what's going on. And she could tell we were in another, like, we were, she couldn't even get connected with us. So... She says, uh, she goes to, um, first question she asks, I remember them too. She says, she says, you, no, that oh, wasn't the first yeah. one. She says, what religion are you? That's the first thing she asked him. And he said, he said, um, I'm all of them because they're one. Mm. That's what yeah, he said. And right away you could that. tell she was taken back by that. I'm still thinking, oh, okay. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't even know how to, like I said, I was only a week or two, whatever in the Lord. And she's like, and she went, okay. And then she said, and then she's like, well, let's go to John, um, first, John. first John four one. And she's quoted scripture to him, right? And she was going to start reading it, and he cut her off and tried to sh say the scripture, but he was doing what he did with me in Ephesians, and he was skipping, skipping over it. And she knew she never. She told me this later. She knew what he was doing, that he was trying to thwart her from. And the scripture is, beloved, believe not every spirit, 
But try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. That's God coming in the flesh. Mm -hmm. Every spirit that denies it, I don't care. There's denominations, there's things out there that deny the Joel, deity, boy, that deny the deity of Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah, that is God. not... As God, he was that, a prophet. Yeah, he was a prophet. Yeah. That is the spirit yeah, no, of the like, Antichrist. That any 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 I don't care what sect you are, what branch you are, any sect of Christianity that denies the deity of Jesus Christ, his lordship, that he is God in the flesh, I don't care how they want to get around it, they want to just call him the Son of God and that's it, or the Son of Man. You know, if, if anything that focuses and, and, and doesn't believe Jesus to be divine and fully God is not of the truth. Okay. I don't care what they are, who they are, what they say. Okay, because that's exactly when it says every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. When you look at Jesus Christ, that's the Messiah. That's the promised Messiah. That's Yahshua. That's God Almighty, Yahweh, in the body. Amen. If you don't believe that, you're, you're deceived. Plain and simple. You don't, I'm not trying to say that to be uh, er, arrogant. If you don't have that revelation, um, that, that is a very important revelation because that's the gospel. That's the gospel. What, that, what, the propitiation wouldn't be wouldn't be qualified if it wasn't mm -hmm. God. Who you, did. It's the Father and flesh, the deity and dust. The Creator came in clay. There ain't no there ain't no ifs, and that's what that's really saying there. Okay, so so okay. So, so, so so Angel, she gets to this scripture, and he cuts her off. He won't even let her finish it. And then her third test was, she says, "This is the clincher." Oh, she she didn't get to give him the full test. No, yet. he oh. won't let her. So she, then she says, who, and Danny just quoted it before, said, "Who do you serve? Who do you serve?" And and this is what he said. Myself. myself. That's what he said. And she said myself. Myself. And I was she like, explained. All right, get, get out. out. <laughs> he ran, dude. Boom. He went flying out our door. Get out. I couldn't wait to get out. Yep. She. But she's like, woo. She's like, and then like, I got goosebumps. I mean, I'm just like, woo. Like, get out. I'm like. And he went, he took off, he was gone. And, and she's like, what happened? That's when she started talking to us and we started telling her. And at this Poor time, Dan and I are both still uncertain. Yeah. We're like, man, we're why'd you do shot. that? We liked him. He, you know, we didn't, we didn't know. She's like, no, 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 that he, he was not of God. Whatever he did, she, she knew. And then we started telling her, she's like, that is amazing. You saw what she, they had a hard time receiving yeah, it. They, they, but they, they knew it by the like, dog. At yeah, first, the like, dog, uh, your faces, everything. Mm -hmm. And then she, and then when she tested the spirit and how he responded, you could have took us in two different rooms and we were told the same, same story. Same, same, same testimony. Same, same thing. Well, let's put this out here now, since this okay, is that's, that's what broadcast. happened. So this after that, can I say one quick thing? After that, I could not look at people in the eyes for weeks and weeks. I went to Bible studies. I had a lot of fear after that, but it also. Uh, I know Danny too. We didn't even know how to talk about it. Like I felt like kind of almost yeah, of, because I, around I mean, other Christians. We're actually, going, oh, we're yeah. going to we're going to we're going to a church where probably a lot of them hadn't seen this before and. Ah, you know. Yeah, they kind of blew it off. Like, yeah, like, and we're like, dude, you got it. You know, we're trying. So to hold on, let me ask a question here. So you're sharing you, this. You tried to share it with the church you were going they to. They won't receive they it. They won't receive it. They won't hear us. They, they, they we were new in Christ. Yeah. And like, oh, they're oh, that's on too bad. Yeah, did maybe. you rebuke them? Yeah. Or, or you know, did you rebuke Whatever. it? Or you know, they weren't getting. They, they weren't even. They like, didn't. They didn't get. It was like talking grasp, to mannequins, dude. You know, they didn't what get, happened? They couldn't grasp like what was going down. But you can see now, as I've shared with you both. Mm -hmm. what this meant for when you first shared the gospel with me. Because you brought the gospel, and I was resisting it. Yeah. I had a memory of how the Holy Spirit had already been working in my life. Mm -hmm. Because He used the foundation. Like I shared in my testimony, God used your foundation of a silent witness, which to me meant something did happen. Mm -hmm. And I was the kind of guy who was curious. I mean, I knew you guys for a while. I wanted to know what. Right. Especially when he had said that you were that you were in the Bible now and you were a Bible thumper because, you know, in my circle, that was whatever. that You know, mm, someone yeah. was all caught up in stupidness. But, but you know what I've got? You know what? I'm just talking to normal, everyday people and I kind of tell them that I had something like that, that happened. It's weird. They get interested in it. Oh, I believe in ghost stories. It's like... Yeah, or what kind of drugs were you guys on? I've gotten that question when I've tried to no, share. No, but I mean, like you know, oh, it, 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 they 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 don't they don't have anything to do with Jesus, mm. but 
they believe in that crap on Discovery Channel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Ghost Hunters. <laughs> yeah. It was so, oh, yeah. It's like, no, this is way beyond. This is on a whole different level. Different, this is only through yeah. the Holy Script. Like, this is for real. And one thing, Danny quoted that. And he had quoted, I can't remember exactly. I think he quoted to me in the car. But he said again, he looked at me and said, uh, my people perish and are destroyed for lack of knowledge, and then he laughed. He went, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, he yeah, laughed, yeah, yeah. and maybe that's what Danny was referring to. But yeah. he laughed, like <laughs> yeah, that's Hosea. And he, he, the devil mocks humanity. Has all this knowledge for all these things, how to go to the moon and how to make your phone and, and move. Did we? You know, you know, you know what I'm saying though. And this and in radio waves and cell phones, we have all this knowledge, but we do not have mankind. The devil mocks the fact that man does not have the knowledge of God, yes, of salvation, of eternal life. This very wonderful. You gift. know, it's pretty sad that mankind doesn't have the knowledge to get along. Well, and that it, and that's exactly what. That's, without the knowledge of yeah, God, there's no unity. There without, is none. without Christ, mankind is at war with himself, with one another, um, and that's what we see. Christ is the answer. He is, he is, his kingdom, the, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, love, and joy mm. in the spirit. God has promised us the Holy Spirit. I mean, that's where I was when they were sharing the gospel with me in 1998, you know, a, almost a year, because this happened in October of 97. Dave was sharing with me in August of 98, okay, and I, and, and it took Dave months, like I shared my testimony, it, it wasn't until January of, of 99 that I actually went up to a Bible study, and that was the night I got that I you know prayed to the Lord and asked, and just asked the Lord. I just I, I basically a lot like what Keith Green said is no compromise. All right, God, I, I'm inviting you in. Whether or not you come in will be the test of who you really are. Something along those lines. He just basically put God on mm -hmm. the test. Like a lot of people, when I've shared, when, especially after you know that first summer, the summer of 1999, mm -hmm. you know, because I, I had that conversion in, in January, and over that whole summer, because of my skateboarding, I was reaching out to all my friends in the, in the skate park, and uh, the, the number one thing is, oh, you can't trust the Bible, dude. And then they, there's the assumption that it's the, like a game of telephone. This, the Bible has been translated and translated each upon the copy a copy before, so it's this, like, like you get a huge people in a circle and they, whisk, they tell a secret to the left, and by the time it comes back to them, it's a different story. That's what, that's what I got for people. But for the listener, you go look it up right now, you'll find out that there is the ancient texts in Greek and Aramaic, and there's a Septuagint, and then there's direct translation. It's a one transfer. Mm -hmm. And and the number one thing people say is there's contradictions in the Bible. You can't trust the Bible, there's contradictions in it. The ones that I have confronted and dealt with are mistranslations, and if anyone had a really solid you know, contradiction, or even better yet, the Bible's been changed, show me. Right. If the Bible had been changed, someone could say, here's a copy that was found in blah, blah, blah. Here's a different copy that was found somewhere else, and they're different. But they can't do that, because there isn't. Right. You know, and you have the Gnostic Gospels, which are false Gospels. Right. Of course, the devil counterfeits. One thing I want to say to reiterate on that is just what you had said. I remember when you had shared um, some of the testimony with me, and I, I listened to it. That's one of the questions you had posed me early on, and I said, "Listen, if God is 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 Almighty, He's omniscient, He's omnipotent, and, he, and He's and He's all powerful, could He not easily preserve That's what, yep. His word? You know what I'm saying? He I has easily preserved hu the human race. He's easily preserved the seed. He's e easily preserved the stars that hang in the sky. He's preserved all these things. Could He not uh, preserve His word?" In the earth, I mean, it's like, come yeah. on, hello. Of course, he can. He's sovereign. You know, he's a, he's a sovereign God, and that his his word endures from generation to generation. I mean, they've tried to to put the flame out and put the scriptures out. They tried to put the scriptures out in 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 how many times? And I mean, they've tried to burn and 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 the adversary has has bound up the scriptures in, into religious fascism and in in oh, yeah. everything else and it just is not it, it, it they cannot destroy it i can say on record you will never be able to destroy the word of god it endureth forever try mm. it will never happen it can't mm. you can destroy everything else but you cannot destroy god's word why mm. because it's sanctified and supernaturally preserved that's why israel that's why like even jerusalem why is jerusalem still there I mean, like, dude, can, you gotta be just, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can, hello. Wax, we can wax long and all that. All that stuff, yeah.
We've we've gone through the, the testimony, and I really want to thank you guys for being awesome. open hey. and honest and just laying it out there. I hope it um, it blesses people. I mean, it's the truth before before the Lord, and God knows. You know, we gotta we gotta give an account one day. You know, to the Lord. Well, thank you for. I'm sure this is gonna go somewhere, and people are gonna be blessed by what you share. Yeah, Amen. Um, I want to ask you if uh, you want to close this up with a prayer and just pray for the listeners. Sure. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, um, your ways are past mine and all, Lord. Um, it's amazing how you work all things to the good, Lord. You know, we, we've been through a lot of um, bumpy roads along the way, Lord. We've backslidden. We've just a lot of different things, Lord. And uh, you have been faithful, God, even when we've been faithless, Lord. Um, and you have opened the doors, Lord, for us to um, share our personal testimonies, Lord, of what occurred and what happened to us. Um, and we pray, Lord, that you would use it to your glory. Yes, uh, that it was a confirmation, Lord Jesus, of your word, and also a sign, Lord, of the times. Um, when these things begin to happen, look up, your redemption draweth near. I think people need to uh, take heed, Lord. Um, and give ear to the fact that we that you allowed it, Lord, for that to manifest and for us to experience that. And as, as, as you've worked it out tonight, Lord, and even before the internet, Lord, this happened, where the internet was as strong like it is now, um, how you have opened up an opportunity, Lord, for this testimony to um, be spread. Because I believe God had happened um, for a purpose. Mm. And I pray, Lord, you'd open up the ears uh, and... and, 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 and the hearts, Lord, that men could receive this testimony, Lord. I know that there's the flesh, and I know that it would be tempting for people to doubt. But I pray, Lord, that there's two witnesses. The Bible says, let every word be established in the mouths of two or three witnesses. You have uh, two different men here, Lord, testifying. Mm. And uh, and Jesus, you did all kinds of miracles, Lord, and the, po the apostles. And many things were done in your name, Lord, glorious and even more uh, supernatural and even more, um, you raised the dead and all those things. And people still, uh, Lord, rejected you. People mm. still, as, as Paul said, these things weren't done in a corner, Lord. Um, and, and so it doesn't surprise me, Lord, that even, even through this testimony, um, people still may harden their hearts. But, Lord, we pray that you would use this uh, to your glory and to minister to people mm. um, you, that, that you are real, Lord. That, that, that Lord Jesus, you are alive. Um, that you love us, that you are calling um, all all men, Lord, to turn to you and to call upon you and to learn about you and to grow in the grace and the knowledge of Lord Jesus Christ, to to repent, Lord, um, and to um, turn to you, Lord, and to receive the free gift um, that you have given us, Lord, and to grow in your word. And I pray, I pray that, Lord, hmm. um, that your arm is not too short, Lord, that it can't save. Um, there is nothing too hard for you, Lord. I pray also, Lord, for all, anyone, Lord, who may be in bondage, who is listening to this, Lord, um, who is still, who knows, Lord, that they are caught or maybe trapped um, in a particular sin, uh, but something has compelled them, Lord, or you have led them to 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 listen to this, or you brought them, or however, maybe somebody has given them this. Lord, I pray for them right now, Lord, yes, that you break every yoke. Yes, Jesus. Jesus, uh, all the cords, the, the chains, Lord, yes, that you would deliver, Jesus, that you would heal, that you would anoint them, Lord, mm. and restore them, revive them, and resurrect them, Jesus, to the fullness, to the abundance of life, that they could feed on the abundance of peace and the still waters, Lord, uh, the heritage, the solidarity in the family of God, mm. the unity, Lord, the, the love of the brotherhood, all the great blessings, all the spiritual blessings that are in Christ. We pray that, Lord, that they would enter in yes. and that a wide entrance would be ministered onto them, Lord. A broad door, not a skinny door, Lord, not a smaller, but a wide door would be ministered onto them, Lord. That they would enter in and press in to the things of your kingdom, to the riches of, from your purse, Lord, to sit at your table and to sup with you, Lord, and to know you, Jesus, to know you, Lord, that you are the living God, mm. that you love us. Lord, I thank you for... Danny and I have not seen each other, Lord, for two years. You worked a miracle, Lord, and have delivered me out of the whale's belly, Lord, out of the prison, You, you, uh, out of an amazing, um, just an amazing testimony, Lord. 
But I'm so thankful to see my brother again, Lord. I pray for Brother Daniel, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Jesus, that you'd just really bless him. I thank you for his testimony tonight, Lord. Um, just amazing that you worked this together. Thank you for Dan's diligence, Lord. Um, and his steadfastness, Lord, to get this done. He felt it was a heavy burden on his heart to... to um, to, to seek this opportunity. And boy, Lord, you know we were attacked. Lord, you know, and the people listening do not know how much Satan um, ha has tried to, I mean, at the expense of my marriage and everything, Lord, has wanted to um, thwart this from happening. And it doesn't surprise me. But I'm thankful, Lord, that we are gathered together in your name. And mm -hmm. just bless, Lord, the ministry and bless this word in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Each of our lives is a story. And with each new person we meet, we become a part of their story and they become a part of ours. The God who created the universe has somehow woven together these billions of stories into one story, which is the greatest story ever told. I right, check it. Let's go back in time, brethren. Divine lessons. Always keep your mind guessing. The glory of the triune gods, what I'm stressing. The origin of humankind was fine. Blessings were plenteous. God is amazingly generous. Crazy benefits in a state of innocence. God told a man what he could taste was limited. Not long after came my nemesis in Genesis. He scanned well. Man fell, damned to hell The whole human race, he represented it Fooled by the serpent Man through his work, woman through birth Even the earth ruled by the curses But instead of awake, immediately God said a seed would be the one to crush the head of the snake Yo, wait, what's this? Whoa, what gracious gift In Jehovah's faithfulness, he clothed the nakedness This was so they would know their Savior's kiss and bliss But first many growing pains exist Suffering in the worst form, ugly deeds Eve's firstborn seed made his brother bleed Indeed, things got progressively worse every section of the earth been affected by the curse and though god's judgments against sin were gory praise the lord is not the end of the story it's the greatest story ever told the god the suits foes whose hearts turn cold it's the greatest story ever told the story know that the enemy stole it's the greatest story ever told the glory of christ is the goal it's the greatest story Next scene, man's sin was extreme God gets steamed, man gets cream The Lord is so holy that he drowned him in the water Fire in the valley of slaughter, Sodom and Gomorrah But at the same time he's so gracious and patient That from one man he created a whole nation Eventually enslaved by the mentally depraved They cried out to the only one with the strength that he could save He brought him out with signs and wonders Satisfied the hunger, then he appeared on Mount Sinai In thunder where he laid down the law For God ruled government, commonly referred to as the Mosaic Covenant Sins and so for man to know he's unrighteous, God instituted animal sacrifices. This was to show our constant need for atonement. And when it came to sin, the Lord would never condone it. And when his people disobeyed and went astray, he raised up prophets and kings to lead them in the way. But they would get foul with their idolatry, wet and wild. Prophecy sent them into exile to take their punishment like a grown man. Then with his own hand, he placed them back in their homeland. And while in their forefathers' land they dwell, they awaited the arrival of Emmanuel. It's Word. The Story ever told. The God pursues foes whose hearts turn cold. It's the greatest story ever told.